Hello, welcome to HomePod. I am stupid expensive and to use me properly, you need to pay for Apple Music, buy special smart home devices that are HomeKit compatible, and want to use the best virtual assistant in the world, Siri. Hey, that's me. That's not going to work for me. Let's change it. You hear Apple fans and sometimes apologists talk about the ecosystem, how it's the best thing since the last time the Lakers won a championship. And in a lot of ways, that's true. The ecosystem is incredible if you are all in inside of it. If you get a phone call on your iPhone, it'll ring through on your iPad and your Mac. Apple Pay works across devices, AirPods sync across devices, you've got iCloud Drive. There's a huge list of ways that Apple's ecosystem just works together if you have all of those products and if you spend the money for all of those products, but if you're missing a key component of that, the ecosystem can feel broken. So when everything works with Apple's ecosystem, it's awesome. I mean, as I'm sitting here, I've got an Apple Watch on, I've got an iPhone sitting next to me, I've got an iPad with some notes on it. And if my phone rings while I'm filming this, I'm going to have three devices that are going to ring and give me options to answer it on whatever one is most convenient to me. So there are a lot of reasons I think why Apple's relationship between hardware and software is so special and probably unique. And the biggest one is it's, it's vertically oriented, which means they make the hardware and they make the software. They're in charge of the production for all of it and development of all of it. So they have a better control over top to bottom. And that gives you the functionality that you just don't get with other manufacturers. But, and here's the big but, if you love an iPhone and you love an iPad, but you really wanna have a PC laptop, there's a big gap in what the ecosystem can do. And a lot of people want to branch out. Maybe they like having an iPad, but they don't want an iPhone. Or maybe they really like, you know, the Razer laptop or the Surface line of, of laptops. But they don't want to get a MacBook Pro or spend the money. Then you're losing out on a lot of those awesome features that Apple can offer you. And like traditionally, it's been really tough to impossible to sort of crack a hole in that ecosystem, you know, to jailbreak, so to speak, your way in. But occasionally, and just sometimes, you get a way in where you don't have to spend the money to get inside of Apple's walled garden, but you still get a plant dance and do a little twirl and enjoy the best of Apple's ecosystem without paying the prices for what Apple is charging to get into it. So if there's one Apple product that's like the most Apple-y of all the products, it's gotta be the HomePod. If you like Siri and you subscribe to Apple Music, you've got a bunch of home capable devices, you're going to absolutely love the HomePod. But if you use Spotify, you don't like Siri, then it becomes a really expensive speaker and that's about it. All right, so this is clearly like not a TLD dream desk, but everything that's here is for a reason. I am gonna do my best Dr. Frankenstein impression and I'm going to kind of hack a new brain into the HomePod with the help of a Raspberry Pi. Essentially, we're gonna get rid of the, or at least add to the Siri functionality, let us use an Amazon Echo Dot or even a Google Home. And while we're at it, we're gonna make Spotify work hands-free with the HomePod. All right, so we've got a Raspberry Pi 3 here. You don't need the most powerful Raspberry Pi. Most of them actually will work for this. So we got a couple things plugged in, but perhaps the most important one, uh, we've got a dongle that's gonna give us a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. We've loaded up some special software on here. I'm going to it down below how we did it. It was really easy. It probably took about 10 minutes just loading some software on it. Very simple to follow. And what this is gonna let us do is anything that we plug into the 3.5 millimeter headset jack is going to be AirPlay compatible. So that'll let us use the Echo Dot instead of the, hey, this lady's name, or any other assistant that we want to plug in like a Google Home. All right, so now we're gonna interface with the Raspberry Pi and this is either going to look crazy simple or incredibly complicated, but whatever camp you're in, I promise anybody can do this. This is just the UI for Raspberry Pi once you hook a monitor up to it. So upper left hand corner, there's gonna be a little icon. It looks like a terminal and it's appropriately called terminal. You gotta put in a few codes. So we'll do CD space BabblePod. Enter, and then we'll do node 
space index dot js, push enter. All right, so now we are gonna go to the browser. It's that little globe thing. It's Chromium based in case you're wondering. And we're gonna go to the IP address for the Raspberry Pi. So in this case, so it's pretty simple here. So the top is the source. So I've got USB audio because I've got that little dongle plugged in. Uh, and then where I want to AirPlay too. So this one here is called AirPlay Office. I can adjust volume here and pretty much good to go. All right, so as promised, Alexa, play music by Joe Barksdale on Spotify. Playing songs by Joe Barksdale from Spotify. Coming through on the HomePod. Maybe you guys can't be able to tell where you are, but it is coming through on the HomePod. Look, I can adjust the volume. Gets louder. All on the HomePod. Rocking out to my boy Joe Barksdale. So these are just like some examples. You can really do anything that you could plug into a 3.5 headphone jack. So if you got an old record player and you wanna be able to airplay that, you can do it. Sort of anything that, again, has a headphone jack, you can make work. A few caveats though, keep it music only. There's about a three-ish second delay, so it's not gonna work if you wanted to airplay something with video. So you would you know, look like it was dubbed over, the mouth wouldn't match the audio. So music only, this is an awesome solution that works well, which is a minimal amount of, of computer know-how. So obviously this hack works. There are some caveats to functionality, but it's frustrating that you have to go through these steps to change your default streaming music player to play on your HomePod speaker. And sort of that typifies Apple. What works really well is all the Apple first party services. And every now and then, they'll sort of grant access to something that's not made by them. And that's really the beauty of what Android has been. And I wish there was a happy middle ground where you have the functionality to use what you want and still get the best from Apple's experiences. There are a lot of upsides with the Apple ecosystem. And I've talked about this in previous videos. I love the default photos app. My 90 year old grandparents use an iPhone. I can share pictures to a shared gallery. They see it, it shows up on their phone. They can leave comments and they know how to use it. That's a huge plus for me. Uh, iMessage, certainly something a lot of us in the US love. I know people outside of the US are more WhatsApp focused, but that's a big deal. It's nice to have, it makes things easier for group chats. It's a luxury that I've gotten myself used to. So I obviously like what Apple's offering, but there's a lot of areas for improvement. Giving away extra storage space on iCloud would be really nice to have, or upping what the standard free tiers would be nice. And I know this is probably pro competition, uh, but I would love Apple to offer their services on other OS's, be able to have iMessage on Android would be awesome. Um, even though I know that's never gonna happen, I'm sort of holding out hope. And we're starting to see little bits where Apple is becoming a bit more open. So like the Apple TV Plus experiment is interesting to see Apple playing nice with other manufacturers and seeing AirPlay show up from other manufacturers is very interesting. And I'm, I'm wondering, and maybe I'm hopeful that Apple's kind of using it as a use case. If we give up control of the hardware that our services are going to be used on, is that experience still going to be the same as if Apple made it themselves? And I hope that the answer is yes, and I hope people are enjoying and going to enjoy using you know, AirPlay and watching Apple TV Plus content on non-Apple devices. So perhaps they will start doing that for other services. And that's what I think we'll see a new direction for Apple. And when hacks like this won't be necessary, when you can sort of take your services with you, no matter what platform you're using and still have access to those awesome things that Apple does give you. So what Apple's gonna do next is kind of anybody's guess. Their walled garden, I mentioned that, is, is incredible if you are all in. If you're missing a product or you don't wanna pay the money for a particular piece of that walled garden, you're left with a degraded experience. And my hope is that Apple fixes that. That lets you sort of experience that missing part with another manufacturer or sort of make a solution yourself like we tried here. And I'm hoping the next decade for Apple is a more open decade. And I'm hoping that they let us get access to some of their awesome services without having to buy Apple products. And maybe it's a pipe dream, maybe it's a pie in the sky wish, but I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic. It's gonna be a very good next few years for Apple and hopefully play nice with other companies.